Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Sarah Wong. Our top stories tonight. Australians vote for a new government in an election closely watched by China. Hong Kongers between 18 and 59 years old queue for a fourth COVID jab. And three students from a secondary school in Southern District contract the virus this week. Vote counting is underway in Australia's general election following a closely fought race between Prime Minister Scott Morrison and opposition leader Anthony Albanese. The economy and welfare dominated the campaign, while ties with Beijing are not expected to improve no matter who wins. Accompanied by his wife and daughters, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison cast his ballot in Sydney. The 54-year-old leader of the Conservative Liberal Party is the first incumbent to hold office from one election to another since 2007. He traded blows with Labour Party leader Anthony Albanese in a last-ditch attempt to win over undecided voters in a tightly fought race. What Australia needs is someone who knows how to manage money, knows how to deal with our national security interests, knows how to be able to move forward and secure that strong economy. The alternative is a weaker economy. Scott Morrison looks for division and difference rather than unity and common purpose. I want to bring people together and regardless of how people vote in our great democracy, Australians are mostly concerned with livelihood issues as the cost of living has surged to a two-decade high. As always, it's always money in the economy. Um, immigration, of course. Increased Medicare would be great, especially I'd like dental put on Medicare because dental health is terrible in Australia. China is closely monitoring the election for other reasons. Sino-Australian tensions soared to an all-time high on Morrison's watch, with trade ties souring as Canberra moved closer to the United States. Some Chinese scholars believe Australia's confrontational stance towards Beijing won't change, regardless of who wins the election. U.S. President Joe Biden and his South Korean counterpart Yoon suk yong have agreed to expand joint military exercises in a move that is expected to anger North Korea and China. President Yoon and I committed to strengthening our close engagement and work together to take on challenges of regional security, including addressing the threat posed by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, by further strengthening our deterrence posture and working toward a complete denuclearization of the, Prince of the Korean Peninsula, promoting stability across the Taiwan Straits as well, and ensuring freedom of navigation, including in the South China Sea and beyond. Despite his stern words, Biden said he was willing to send vaccines immediately to North Korea and China to help combat COVID outbreaks there. On his first trip to South Korea as U.S. president, Biden toured a Samsung Semiconductor plant and the National Cemetery in Seoul. Separately, two U.S. secret agents were put on leave and sent home after getting involved in an argument with a Korean taxi driver when they were off duty. More than 80 cases of monkeypox have been reported in at least 12 countries, but health officials cautioned against panic. People will still react to a condition that they are not familiar um, with seeing, uh, even if it does not cause as many deaths or even as many cases um, at the end of the day as sort of the more common conditions that they have. I, I would like to see the kind of panic or worry that people uh, displaying now in response to malaria. Malaria affects everybody, kills more people, more children, uh, but you don't get that kind of reaction. The World Health Organization is monitoring the disease, which has been reported in Europe, the United States, Canada, and Australia. Experts agree that a rare viral infection is usually mild, and most patients recover within weeks. The risk to public health is said to be low, as the virus does not spread easily. Locally, 
three secondary school students in Southern District tested positive for COVID this week. Their classmates have to undergo tests for two days, while health officials keep a close eye on the situation in the school. Macy Mock reports. COVID cases in Hong Kong have continued to decline, dropping today to 228, including 16 imported infections. There were no new COVID-related deaths. Albert Au from the Center for Health Protection said two boys from a secondary school in Southern District tested positive yesterday, two days after they last attended class. A classmate of theirs was confirmed positive on Monday. Students in the class were ordered to take rapid antigen tests today and tomorrow. And health authorities will monitor the situation in the school next week to decide if further action is needed. Four more students from the Benchmark Training School in Shen Wan tested positive, expanding that cluster to 21. The government, meanwhile, said the vaccine pass will be required for entry to 13 types of public health care premises starting from June the 13. They include specialist outpatient clinics and student health service centers. Those who are unvaccinated but need treatment will have to obtain a negative PCR test results within 48 hours before the visit. The vaccine pass arrangement will not apply for emergency medical services. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Starting today, Hong Kong residents aged 18 to 59 can receive a fourth COVID jab. Health experts urge people with higher infection risks to get booster shots soon, instead of waiting for the next generation of vaccines. Joanna Ho reports. Walk-in vaccinations for a fourth COVID jab are now available in community vaccination centers. People who face a higher risk, such as medical staff and officers at entry points, and those had their third jab at least six months ago, can get a same-day ticket for vaccination there until Wednesday. Online reservations can be made from 8 a.m. on Wednesday after the booking system is updated. This van driver received his fourth jab soon after the service started today. He was worried that he might easily carry the virus home because of contact with many people during work. But this couple aren't too keen on a fourth shot anytime soon. The man explained that the government might roll out the fifth, sixth and seventh jabs later, so it's pointless to get further shots as he believes that the vaccines are not effective in preventing transmissions and infections. College of Physicians President Philip Lee Meanwhile said, vaccine antibodies wane over time, so people should receive booster shots. Lee said, those deemed to have higher infection risks should not wait for the next generation of vaccines, as it is unsure when they will be available. He added, there should not be vaccine pass exemptions for specific age groups, as the city should build up herd immunity. When asked about the detection of the BA.2.12.1 Omicron subvariant in Hong Kong, Lee said current vaccines can provide some protection. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Complaints against a district court judge who ordered people to remove yellow face masks in court were found to be unsubstantiated. A three-judge panel concluded that Ernest Lin's order was appropriate, saying the court is not a place for political campaigns. The panel said the rights of those who wore yellow masks were protected, as they could continue to watch proceedings through a live broadcast in another courtroom. The complaints arose in 2020, when Lin was hearing a case involving four people accused of taking part in an illegal assembly a year earlier. Lawmakers are divided over a government restructuring plan that will cost close to $100 million a year. There's concern that the public may not get value for money. Macy Mock has more. The government's restructuring plan is expected to cost taxpayers an additional $62 million a year after Chief Executive-elect John Lee proposed three additional senior positions. 
He wants deputies for the chief secretary as well as the finance and justice ministers. In all, there will be 17 new posts at an annual cost of $95 million for salaries. The sole non-establishment lawmaker, Tik Chi Yun, said having more people in the administration might not be effective and suggested postponing the creation of the deputy secretary jobs. He said after meeting Lee yesterday, he still did not understand the deputies' roles and wondered whether they will be able to make decisions without consulting their superiors. But Tik supports increasing the number of policy bureaus from 13 to 15. Lawmaker Regina Eep backs the revamp and says it has to be approved by the middle of next month to enable Lee to form his cabinet. We need better coordination between building of transport infrastructure, production of land and building public housing. So it makes sense to put them all under financial secretary and to create a deputy to financial secretary post to strengthen coordination and to clarify responsibilities. So I don't think we should wait. On a separate issue, Yip said it is unlikely that the Executive Council will approve a recommendation to award senior civil servants a pay rise of 7 percent. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Fifteen people, including a 14-year-old student, have been arrested on suspicion of involvement in collecting debts illegally. The roundup followed a police ambush at a cryptocurrency trading office, which was plastered with notices demanding debt repayment. The 13 men and two women who were detained are accused of criminal intimidation, wounding and criminal damage. Two of them were charged with criminal damage. Police alleged that they were members of triad-run debt collection agencies. They splashed paint and posted threatening notices at the homes or offices of their victims. The suspects were allegedly linked to six cases involving debts of $19 million. An elderly man has been arrested on suspicion of trying to strangle a taxi driver with a piece of wire early this morning in Altau Kok. The 49-year-old driver picked up a man in Choi Tech Estate at around 4 a.m. During the journey, the 79-year-old passenger said he left his wallet behind and asked the driver to turn back. He then allegedly tried to put a piece of wire around the driver's neck. Police arrived at the scene and arrested the passenger who fell off the taxi as he grappled with the driver. Both men were taken to hospital. Police classified the case as wounding and possession of an offensive weapon. And on to the weather now. Tomorrow will be mainly cloudy with one or two showers. Temperatures range between 25 and 30 degrees. Cloudy with a few showers on Monday and sunny intervals on Tuesday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Saturday night. Join us for more updates at 11. I'm Sarah Wong. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and take care.